military and civilian that in that time would not turn a weapon on their own people and would not go and enforce it. But I will say this, there is a precedent. 2005, we had Katrina. And what happened down there? I truly believe that in a way, that was a dry run of things to come. No, no, now they're announcing this is a model for America today on CNN. This is a yes. model. We're going to put troops everywhere. The people want troops. They loved it in New Orleans. And if you look at the polls and see how Ron Paul is surging, do the people really want troops on the street? No, of they course really they don't. Want, right. It's like saying you want a hole in the head. So you have a tremendous propaganda campaign underway against our own people, and that needs to change. So that's why I can't encourage people enough to get your information from alternative media sources like InfoWars, like Orion Talk Radio, all of that kind of stuff so that you are aware of what is really going on. Well, Without obviously, I mean, that's a good point, but... I mean, now it's all manifesting. The internet censorship, the calls yes. for arrest of citizens, it's here. There's no more time to live in the Nile. People shouldn't, shouldn't see this information and take it for granted. It's now time for banner hangs on highways. It's right. now time to call and talk radio. It's time to go visit your mayor, your police chief. I mean, let me tell you, four years ago, the awesome police chief would laugh at me in person. Now, behind the scenes, he gets me by the arm and says, well, I can't even say what he said. <laughs> but I mean, you know, let me tell you, they're, they're being told stuff that's really waking them up now. Yeah. And well, that's the thing is that there's no, there's no veil of secrecy. No, anymore. this is slitting America's throat. Yeah. You got to decide what side you're on. You're with these foreign banks that think they're going to march the military and police out against the people, or you're with America. There's no more time to play games. Don't be hot or cold, you know? It, it will make the decision. Be hot or cold, but don't be lukewarm. You know, don't sit on the fence. And that's the thing. And I, I truly believe that that thought process in the United States is there simply because people still have too much to lose. When they look at it at the end of the day, they say, man, I really disagree with what's going but on. But you're going to lose everything. That's the trick. That's They're the They're going to lose everything if you don't stand against them. Absolutely. But they still, at the end of the day, think, well, you know, maybe if we wait it out, things will go back to the way they are. Well, guess what, folks? It's not going back to the way it was. It's simple as that. The days of, of the white picket fence and the nice house and everything like that, it's over. So now it's time to take our country back and save the republic. And the only way that that happens is if everybody collectively, regardless of race, of income, of all that, take all the divisive ta tactics, the left, the right paradigm, all that false divisive tactics that they employ against you, See through it, band together, and let's beat this thing. I agree with you. Let's go back to the DOD in closing. What is it like? Because that's about the number I've gotten from every expert and what I've seen. About half are awake in some degree. The other yes. half tend to get more clingy and are, are like, arrest everyone, and it's wonderful. And, well, I'm not bad, so let them arrest other citizens. The others are like good Nazis, good commies. They'll do whatever they're told. Or can we wake them up? I mean, what is it like to have half the DOD awake and the other half just ready to, to do whatever they're told, ship grandma off to a FEMA camp if she doesn't suck Obama's boots. Well, I, I, would, I would say that that's a little too general. Let's just say half are awake. They know what's going on. They're just kind of afraid. 25% just don't care. They're just like, hey, man, you know, NFL's on on Sunday. Woohoo! All right. Then the other 25% are gung-ho, anti-Muslim, you know, 9-11, that's the way it was. That's the way, the, you know, the government commission. Well, yeah, no, no, they'll say we're taking old lady's house. She's, right. uh, she's a Baptist, but, but Al-Qaeda. And they just, I mean, yeah, exactly. you tell them Al-Qaeda, you're like, but Al-Qaeda was given control of Libya. Uh, I don't right. want to hear that. I mean, exactly. It's like a religion. Right, exactly right. So, I mean, I would say probably about a quarter of it is, is people that are just gung-ho to the core. They believe everything that they said. You know, they're the, good, they're the good soldier. Don't ask questions. It's like an attack dog that'll run into whatever you tell it to do. Exactly right. But, it, but all of that spawns from a lack of knowledge. And so the one thing that, that I like to do is I just start off with simple things and I show how things are just so backwards. In okay, let's stop right there. Let's say you're sitting there around the coffee, coffee machine, you got a 10 minute break. And I'm sitting there going, I hope we arrest every Muslim and kill them. Nuke every country over there. I, who cares if we get rid of the Bill of Rights as long as we rat them muzzlers out? What do you say to me? 
<laughs> well, I call you an ignorant buffoon. That's what I call you at first. But what I would say is uh, look at all these people that work with us because it's a very diverse workforce within the government. Uh, is that person over there? You think he's out to get you? Is he that, that wolf in sheep's clothing? Do you think? Because we can go back to McCarthyism if you want. Well, then you have to explain McCarthyism because they don't know what McCarthyism is. But that's, that's the type of thing. And then you start pointing out, well, why are we spending this much for this? Why are we doing this for that? And you start breaking down how wasteful government is. And then you start going as to why is it wasteful? What are we doing? What are we getting involved in? And when you start going down into the policy of how, what we're doing, what we're getting involved in, what we're sticking our nose in, they're like, holy moly, you're right. Like, why, why in the hell did we invade Libya? Why? You know, and then you start to tell them why. And oh, there you go. The, the light what do they say when on. you bring up the fact that Al-Qaeda was created by our own government? Oh, yeah, I get, I get a lot of backlash for it. I get, but that's the thing. And then, you know, what you do they think about Fox News and Amor al Awlaki, number three in Al Qaeda, hanging out secretly with the Secretary of, uh, of the Army? Well, that's, and I asked that question. You tell me why that happens. And if you can give me a legitimate answer, I would be glad. I'll take it. Sure. You just yeah, tell I'd me. I'd love to hear a legitimate reason. Me too, but I've yet to find one because they can't. They just listen, <laughs> listen, Joe. I wish yes. every day it was just some Muslim terrorist because I'm not scared of that. It's super creepy knowing that the people that run our government think they can just take a billion plus bucks out of private accounts and keep it and go on TV and say they're you know. I mean, because because the media calls me, and they go, "You just want to say it's the government because you're so scared that it could be Muslims." And, and I'm like, "What and, are you talking about?" Well, it's a thousand you, times scarier that our government is run by a bunch of psychos. Yeah, and how do you expect psychos to police themselves? They're not going to police themselves. All these ethics committees and everything else. Run by them. It's all, it's all BS. It's all bunk. The only way that they get policed is if we police them. The only way the Constitution has any teeth is if we give it teeth. If we don't give it teeth, the Constitution is... Is, is no, right. We have to animate it. It's the animating contest of liberty. Okay, in 60 seconds, Joe, we got to have you back up. Really appreciate you sending us so many things that are public. It's like, wow. And then we put it out, and it, it, you know, you know, if we put out some you know, moderately big piece of news, it's like in hundreds of newspapers, but anything really bombshell, like here's the FEMA camps, it's proven, government websites, here's the contracting, military says the American people are you know, the red enemy. And then it'll, it'll get no attention, but at least on the real alternative media for now, it'll get attention. But 60 seconds, any closing comments about these documents and what this means? Well, it's simply this. Now is the time to make a stand, to draw the line in the sand. You're seeing it for yourself, folks. You got the documents here. Everything is .gov right from the horse's mouth. It's time to use these documents to your advantage, read them, it's dry as a bone, but read them anyway and educate yourself. Look up the acronyms, look up what this stuff means. It's all public information. Nothing is secret. This is not secret stuff. It's public on the street. And it's all available if you take the time and do the research. So a little less dancing with the stars, a little more going into this and reading about what our government is doing. And, you know, thomasloc.gov, go to the Library of Congress, look up what these bills say, and start holding our elected officials responsible for their actions. Well, you're right. I mean, I remember 12 years ago learning that U.S. Code Title 50 Chapter 32, subsection 1528, paragraph B. They later changed it because it got public attention, but the old versions are there. Said that as long as it was research, they could kill people with chemical, biological, radiological testing. Now, we know they did all that, but the fact that they had a law to do it, it's like, whoa, you know, the level of evil. And I remember hearing a talk show host talk about that like 12, 13 years ago and stopping my car and writing it down and looking it up on the government site and going, I, I, they can kill me for no reason? Right. I mean, it just shows how the naivete of the public and the laziness and the complexity of things has brought this in on us. But the pendulum's swinging back the other way. Joe, amazing interview. I'm going to end the show, and I look forward to having you and your wife as official guests back on the official big radio show. Thanks for joining us. Any Anytime, Alex, anytime. Wow. Well, you talk about pointing out uh, the uh, emperor's new clothes. 
You talk about the little three-year-old, you know, pointing and saying, hey, the emperor's not wearing anything from that parable. If you don't know that parable, look it up, folks. It's incredible. I have been to the urban warfare drills. I have seen it for myself. And what I haven't seen is in this slow buildup towards tyranny, this acceleration. The globalists, the bureaucrats, they are like an anthill that's been disturbed, a fire ants. They are teeming around like busy little, little bees right now, or little ants, getting all this ready. And in the contracts, they're not building camps and writing manuals and getting it ready. They are getting ready to activate them. They are flipping the switches on. And to see that happening is incredible. And look at what's happening in the rest of the world. New wars, new lies about WMDs, you know, new lies for old, uh, imploding currencies, all of this. And cops being completely brainwashed against the population. I mean, it's here. What Germany faced, what Russia faced, what so many other countries faced, we're now facing it. But our forebearers foresaw this and tried to warn us. We have the Second Amendment. I don't want to go there. We have the First Amendment. Let's use it right now because there is a war on for your mind, and this is an info war. I want to leave you with a clip of footage I shot on a VHS camera in 1999 in Oakland, California, as the Marines practiced putting Americans in a concentration camp, in this case for protesting for food during a depression. They knew what they were going to do a long time ago. God willing, I'll see you back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central on the radio, and back tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Central, at InfoWars Nightly News. Attention, attention. American forces are here to help. Remain calm. We will not tolerate civil disobedience. Well, I think terrorism is being practiced on the residents of the city of Oakland because many of the uh, retired, in fact, retired teachers, retired military people have uh, informed me that uh, they, they understand what's going on and it's not anything that relates to humanitarian training whatsoever. This is a psychological, as we in the research community say, this is a psyops. They're preparing people for what is coming, not what is being presented today. So you're saying they're preparing people to accept it with incrementalism? That is correct, like the old frog example. You know, you put the frog in the water and you just gradually continue to raise the heat on the water until the frog is cooked. And that's the way it works. The problem is that the local people, people in general, just will not take their heads out of the sand. I'm going to tell everyone I can, listen, we have a serious problem. And it's called a police state. It's called a police state.